great questions for today's office hours. This format's a little different because I'm not streaming it today, but let's get right into it. Welcome, my name is Dr. Megan. I am a board certified physician in internal medicine, lifestyle medicine, and obesity medicine. And this is important because I actually prescribe these medications. I actually talk to patients about their weight all the time. I've helped hundreds of patients lose weight and I'm here to help you too, so welcome. Today, we're talking about lots of great questions you guys sent in. I'm gonna get right into it, but if you're confused about your weight, if you have questions about weight medicine, if you want medically-based answers to your questions, you're in the right place. All right, first question, oh, as a caveat, I can't answer personal medical questions, so for any of those that lean personal, I'm gonna change them a little bit so they're more broader and educationally applicable to everybody. All right, so first question is from Nellie Lee. I'm taking terzepatide. And okay, I'm just gonna, this is a long one, so I'm just gonna shorten it, So we, can, but we'll get the gist of it. Okay, thank you so much for this question. I'm taking terzepatide. Um, I titrated up from 12.5 units to 25 units. Okay, and she did not feel well after that. Okay, stomach pain, burping, nausea, diarrhea, felt dizzy, really afraid she would have to go to the emergency room wasn't eating a lot, uh, hoping she doesn't feel worse. I, she says, I should not have gone from 12.5 units straight to 25 units. I'm just now hearing that some people titrate a little up each week until they get their desired dose. Oh my gosh, thank you so much for, um, for writing in. Um, I think this, um, I think this episode really clarifies the need for patients to um, make sure they're getting their medication from a physician who can monitor them. Because number one, I don't, maybe, I'm not sure what the dosage is of, that this person is taking, but there's no such thing as 25 units or 12.5 units. There's 12.5 milligrams in a dose, but the maximum dose is 15 milligrams for terzepatide. There's no place where, there's no like 25 milligrams. So I'm not sure what the unit of dosing is, but it sounds like this might be compounded, in which case you're not really getting the product. Um, and a lot of times, in addition to all the issues that come with compounding themselves, and I've made it, a lot of videos about this in the past, but um, in addition to those you know, efficacy and safety issues, um, a lot of times people just aren't monitored like they would be if they went to a doctor's office to get this medication. And I definitely hear what people are also saying is like, we need these medications and there's a shortage. Yes, we do need the medications, but we need the right medications, not like a substitute that we don't really know if it's actually the medication and we need um we need somebody to be a patient to be monitored you need to you know make sure that you're checking in with your physician um if somebody's not eating or if they feel terrible um you need to have somebody who you're going to be able to talk to about this so thank you so much for writing in I hope you're doing okay. Um, I'm not this person's doctor, but um, I think this is a good this is a good reminder that we have to be careful where we're getting it from. And I don't have as enough info from this message to be able to say that they're not. So this I certainly could be reading this the wrong way, but um, either way, it's just a good reminder for us all to make sure we're being safe with the medications. So thank you so much for sharing. Okay, next question is from Canadian416. I was prescribed to pyramate for migraines. I'm so confused. Yes, it is totally confusing. Um, Topiramate is used for many different um, indications. So it is an anti-seizure medication, but we do often use it for um, migraines. And we also use it for binge eating and we use it off-label. Um, this is a, a bunch of off-label uses, but um, 
One of the things that we use it off label for is weight management. And particularly, you know, in the past, it was, you know, before the GLP-1 receptor agonists came out, it was definitely used um, significantly for um, you co-prescribing with um, psychiatric medications that might have an unfavorable um, weight profile. So if somebody was going to be taking an antipsychotic, um, a lot of times those medications can really induce weight gain. And so it would not be necessarily uncommon that they would also be prescribed topiramate at the same time. And now we use topiramate on its own. We use it in combination with phentermine. I've made a whole video about topiramate on its own, but you're definitely, I can understand why you're confused because we use it for a lot of different things. So it would not be unusual for somebody to use it for migraines, but also as a weight medication when prescribed by their physician. Next question is from Valerie. I have a question for you. Do antibiotics have an effect on GLP-1s? I'm on azithromycin for sinusitis. I've been hungry all day and food doesn't fill me up like it was. Oh my gosh, this is such a good question. Um, so essentially the gist of the question is, is there um, a medication interaction with antibiotics and GLP-1 receptor agonists and Yes, there is. Um, so it's, you know, it definitely depends on the type of antibiotic, but what a lot of antibiotics can do is increase gastric motility. And part of what the GLP-1 receptor agonists do is decrease gastric motility. And essentially that's just a fancy way of saying they either speed up the movement of the stomach or they slow down. So a lot of times antibiotics will speed up the movement of food through the GI tract. So, um, and actually we, there's a cousin in the same class as azithromycin, which is a macrolide antibiotic, um, erythromycin, not azithromycin, but erythromycin is used more off label in terms of, um, speeding up gastric motility in terms of certain procedures, um, or if, uh, patients are having a lot of, um, uh, gastroparesis, then uh, sometimes their GI doctor might use erythromycin to help move things along. That's a cousin of azithromycin, but it would not be outside the realm of possibility to imagine that azithromycin might be speeding up uh, the gastric emptying, the movement of food through the stomach for somebody and kind of offsetting the slowing that happens when they're on the GLP-1 receptor agonist. And we would expect this to return to normal um, when the person was finished with the antibiotic, but that is an excellent question. Um, and uh, thank you so much for sending it in. So, um, so definitely if you are on an antibiotic, that is just something to watch out for. Next question is from Tammy. I just started gabapentin. Okay, I'm on Zepbound. Okay, and she's wondering um, what if that's going to interfere with weight loss. And just to be general and broad about this, yes, gabapentin is one of those medications that, for some people, can fight with their um, GLP-1 receptor agonist or any medication that they're on to help them lose weight. So it's really a case by case scenario. You know, if I had a patient who was on terzepatide or was on Zepbound and they were on 300 milligrams of gabapentin every so often for sleep, I wouldn't be that worried about it. If I have somebody who's on gabapentin, you know, at a high dose several times a day, that's somebody that I think is at much higher risk to not potentially get the full benefit of their Zepbound or their Wagovi. Definitely something that I would be worried about. Again, it's very case by case, but uh, I would not be surprised if that person didn't end up, you know, achieving the average amount of weight loss if they're also on that kind of medication. And so that goes for gabapentin, that goes for Lyrica, that goes for things like Paxil. There are just some medications that we know are more weight promoting. And so they could potentially interfere with a patient's ability to get the full 
benefit from their weight loss medication. So, but everybody's different and you have to weigh the risks and the benefits. So it might be that for somebody, their gabapentin is way more important than um, getting the full effect of their zep bound. So you just have to take these into account. These are all the questions for today. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for sending in your questions. If you have questions after this, please link them down below. Um, if you wanna work with me directly, you can. I'll leave my website down below if you wanna reach out. Um, otherwise, thank you so much for watching and please be well.